Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Jori and today we will look at System 5 Shared Memory in Linux. Shared Memory is a mechanism for inter-process communication in Linux. There are two main branches of inter-process communication in Linux, System 5 IPC and POSIX IPC. System 5 IPC is the original IPC and has been a part of Unix since Unix System 5 release 1 January 1983. POSIX IPC has come up in 1990s and has been a part of Linux since Linux 2.6.6 May 2004. In this video, we will focus on System 5 shared memory in Linux. Interprocess communication There are many interprocess communication mechanisms, pipes, FIFO message queues. In all these mechanisms, one process makes a send like call and sends a message. Other process does a receive like call and receives a message. But shared memory is different. A shared memory region is mapped to the address space of multiple processes. As a process writes in the shared memory, all other processes which have attached this shared memory region can see it right away. It is instantaneous and clearly the fastest way to communicate between processes. The first step in using System 5 shared memory is to get a System 5 IPC key. For this, we can use the FTOK function. There are two parameters. The first parameter, path name, is an existing file in the file system. The contents of the file are not important. The only requirement is that the file must exist. The second parameter, project ID, is an integer. Only the last 8 bits of project ID are used and these must not be zero. SHM get gets a system 5 shared memory segment for the calling process. The first parameter is a system 5 IPC key. SHM get returns a system 5 shared memory segment for this key. The second parameter is the requested size of the shared memory segment and it is rounded off to a multiple of page size. The last parameter is flags. If flags specify IPC create, a new segment is created if it doesn't exist. If IPC create and IPC EXCL are specified and a system 5 shared memory segment already exists, SHM get fails and error number is set to E exist. Also, if the first parameter is IPC private, a new System 5 shared memory segment is created. After getting the shared memory segment, the next call is to attach it using the SHM at system call. The first parameter is the shared memory ID written by an earlier SHM get call. The second parameter is SHM ADDR, the address at which the shared memory segment should be attached. Normally we do not care at which address the shared memory is attached and this parameter can be set to null. Then the last parameter SHM FLG is flags which can be zero for most purposes. SHM at returns a pointer to the attached shared memory segment on success. In case of failure, minus one typecast to void pointer is returned and error number is set to the cause of the error. And SHM DT detaches the shared memory segment is specified by the SHM ADDR pointer which should have been returned by an earlier SHM at call. And now we come to the all important SHM CTL system call for reading and modifying attributes of a system 5 shared memory segment. The first parameter SHM ID identifies the shared memory segment. The second parameter is the command. The important commands are IPC stat, IPC set and IPC RMID. The last parameter is a pointer to the structure SHMIDDS which contains an instance of structure IPC PRM. Now IPC PRM has the key for this shared memory segment, effective user and group IDs of owner and creator and the mode which has permissions and sequence number. The other members of the struct SHMIDDS are segment size, last attach, detach and change times PID of creator, PID of the last SHM80 
or SHMD T and number of current attaches. If the command is IPC stat, all this data is copied in the struct pointed by the last parameter buff. If the command is IPC set, some of the fields of the struct SHMID DS in the kernel for the shared memory segment are modified with the values passed in the struct pointed by buff. We can modify the effective user and group IDs of the owner and the least significant 9 bits of permissions in shmperm.mode. If the command is IPC RMID, the shared memory segment is marked for removal from the system and is removed when the last process detaches it from its address space. As an example, we look at a client server system using system 5 shared memory for inter-process communication. Clients generate diagnostic messages which need to be printed on the terminal. But if clients write directly on the terminal, the output of one client would get intermingled with the output from others. So there is a shared memory with buffers. Instead of writing on the terminal, clients acquire a buffer in the shared memory and write the output on it. Then there is a spooler server which prints output from each buffer and the output comes to the terminal in the chronological order. So let's look at uh, the client and server code for this example. First the server code spooler.c. This is the server spooler.c and uh, we have got 10 buffers. There are, these are the files for the key, shared memory key, mutex key, sam mutex key, sam buffer count key, sam spool signal key. This is a signal uh, structure for shared memory. There are 10 buffers each of 256 character and there are two indexes buffer index and buffer print index. Buffer index tells which is the next buffer free buffer and buffer print index tells which is the next buffer to be printed by the spooler. So the spooler comes up uh, it makes a sam mutex sam get it makes a mutex sam and then it as it initializes it to zeros that that means zero means right now shared memory is not available so it gets the shared memory so it it does the it makes the key for shared memory and then it does the shm get to get the shared memory it creates the shared memory and it attaches the shared memory to its address space it initializes shared memory all the indexes are set to zero the first index at which buffer is available and first in, first index at which the buffer for printing is there. Then it makes the key for buffer count semaphore and buffer count semaphore has the value of 10 max buffers. Then there is a spool signal sem. The spool signal sem it, uh, it has initially it's a value of 0. So this is what will be signaled by the clients. Now this, this is the infinite loop of spooler. It spooler it goes in the loop and then it does a P operation. This is a P operation for a spool signal SAM. It's waiting for somebody to signal some client to signal that right now there's a buffer to be printed. So it gets stuck here and let's look at client code. This is the client code. 10 buffers and then the files for making the key for IPC, making system 5 IPC key and this is the shared memory and the client gets the mutex sem it doesn't create it, it just gets it and it also gets the shared memory it does the, it does the SHM get to get the shared memory and it attaches the shared memory to its address space and then it creates the it, it gets the buffer count sam again no creation just get it and it gets the spool signal sam so the client uh, it gets into this loop so it creates the a string as a user input and then this is a string f with f get s it gets a string with f get s and then it uh, it gets a buffer it gets a buffer in the shared memory 
by doing doing a p operation on buffer count sam then it does a p operation on uh, p operation on mutex sam it gets a buffer it does the arithmetic for uh, the buffer index and then uh, it writes uh, it writes with s printf in the buffer it writes the string with s printf along with uh, its process id pid and buffer in the string so then it does a v on mutexm it releases the shared memory others can use it now and then it signals the spooler to print so now let's get back to spooler so now since client has done a v operation the spooler's p operation passes and then it takes the string from the buffer from of shared memory and it prints the screen uh, string on the screen with printf then it does the arithmetic for the buffer pointer and uh, finally it releases the buffer by by doing a v operation it does a v operation on the buffer so that one buffer is released and that's how the client and server work we can uh, compile the client is client and server we can compile this server and client gcc spooler dot c minus o spooler and gcc client dot c minus o client now we create the files for the ipc system 5 ipc key slash temp slash shared memory key slash temp slash sam mutex key slash temp slash sam buffer count key slash temp slash sam spool signal key now we run the spooler and we can run the client here so client generates a message which is printed by the spooler along with the pid we can uh, run more clients so this again message comes here and we can run one more one more client so this is how the client and server work with this we come to the end of this video you can get all this information at http colon double slash bit dot ly slash system v hyphen shared hyphen memory thanks very much for watching have a good day